Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday morning, about 20 after 10, and I'm in the mood to make some chili today. So, come watch me make some chili. It'll be fun. So let's go, and I'll show you what I'm going to work with. All right, guys, so I'm in the kitchen. See, Randy's got a big red bowl. I got a big red pot. So here we go. We got, for this chili, I got, ooh, look at that beef. This is short rib beef. Okay, um, off the bone. Normally I would use um, chuck roast, I have a two pounder and I'll just cut it up into pieces. But I figured, you know what, I'm gonna splurge today and get some short rib meat. So we got that, we got some hot Italian sausage meat. That's also very good. Olive oil, of course, salt, pepper, onions. A Little bit of that day, or Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, I'm good at saying that. We got some peppers, I'll probably only use the yellow and the red. Um, I do have some black beans now, you know, if you're from Texas, you know, we nobody don't like beans in your chili, but I do. It's my chili. I make it how I want. All right, we got, yes, pickled jalapenos, tomato paste, San Marzano tomatoes, whole tomatoes, and I'll just crush them up in my hand. Oh, another good ingredient is some beer. So I have this can of beer here. It's a, an Indian Pale Ale, IPA. Uh, it's pretty good. It's from Three Threes Brewing Company here in New Jersey. That's where I'm from. And I'm a Back to the Future fan, so why not have a time machine on it, right? So we got that. Oh, and also, we've got my chili mix. I already have my seasoning all ready to go. Um, I'll probably put a link in the description. Oh, not a link. Uh, in the description and the recipe, if you guys want to make it, have at it. So this is everything I'm going to be pretty much working with, although I think the only thing I don't have up here is um, I don't have the garlic out yet, and I don't have the celery out here yet, but that's going to go in there too. But I'm going to set this up so you guys can see everything I'm doing between chopping and seasoning and stuff like that. So enjoy and uh, let me know if I uh, think it looks good. And that's it. All right. Okay. So here we go. Always make sure your hands are clean. I just washed mine so they're good to go. We're going to season this beef up. A little bit of salt and pepper. Probably put a little bit more salt in it. We're going to do both sides. So we're going to do the one side, and then we're going to do the other side. Make sure you salt these up good. It's nice meat. We'll get in there, and we're going to use some fresh black pepper. I love this pepper grinder. This thing is great. It's better than doing this, so we just got to... It's good stuff. All right, so we'll just pat that down, get that salt and pepper into that meat. Beautiful. Let's turn these pieces. And we're going to try to get all the sides seasoned up. Um, because, you know, you always want to season your beef. Just take it and put it onto the uh, cutting board. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Turn all this meat around. So we got this side going, we'll get this side seasoned up. Do, 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 do. do a little salt bay. Now you know what, I'll leave that to him. See, another reason why I, I've never really used <clears throat> short ribs before, but they are very nice and meaty. They've got a good uh, marbling in them, some fat marbling, which is going to add a ton of flavor. Um, this out here, throw this out. Use one hand, I'll 
the other hand too. Beautiful. All right, so we're gonna let this stuff sit for a few minutes just to get all that salt and pepper work in there. And we'll go from there. And then I gotta get another cutting board for the vegetables and more wash this one. Huh. All right, so we got our salt done here. We got our pepper, it's out of the way. Let's put this stuff on a plate. So we got our beef going here. I'm gonna get this guy turned on. And we're gonna get this beef browned up. In the big red pot. I'm gonna do a little olive oil in there. Nice little infuse, a little wine glass that I just recycled into a olive oil bottle. Use the darker colors to keep it darker color glass for the olive oil. I'm gonna get this hot, get it all nice and hot. I'm gonna throw some. We're gonna do this in batches. I don't want to put it all in there because it. What'll happen is it'll just wind up getting a lot of juice in there and it'll wind up steaming. I don't want it to steam. I want it to brown. So I'll probably put like three or four pieces in at a time, brown them up, move them to the side, and then uh, then we'll do our sausage meat, brown that up, and then after that, we'll do our veggies and everything. Right, so I'll wait for this to heat up, I'll bring it right back. Alright okay, guys, so oil's about ready, let's start putting this beef in. Oh, look at that, you hear that? That is what you want to hear. And it's going to be in there, I guess. Alright, we're going to brown that up with that brown for a couple minutes. We'll flip it over, get the other side browned up. Um, Smells so good. Oh. And it's only 10 in the morning. Yeah. And I don't know if you notice, it's kind of quiet here. I do have two children. They were uh, sleeping at their pop's house last night. So my wife is uh, left this morning to go on a uh, business trip to Pen to, out in Pennsylvania. So she'll be gone for the majority of the week. So it's just me and the kids this week. Should be fun. Pray for me. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so we want to get a nice sear on the one side. Like I said, about a couple of minutes, and then we'll flip them over. We want to get that nice dark browning. And what's nice too is that that'll add a lot of flavor later in the pan. All the, br the bits from the meat. It's really good. Let me check these. Sticking to it nice. Right. 
another couple minutes and we'll do the other sides too just to get it all browned up and nice. Mm. That browning there, that like caramelization, we call that the Maillard effect. Hopefully you can hear this over my fan. I had a, a kid just got it home, so I browned the other meat. So that's done. I'm just doing the next batch. Bring it back when they're done. All right, so our beef is pretty much all browned up. Take that all out. Now let that sit. All right. So there we go. Nice browned up beef, a short rib, meat. Now we're going to throw in our hot sausage meat. Wherever you want to go. All right, we're going to break this stuff up. I like using this to break up my sausage meat, ground beef, if I'm not doing vegetables here that we're going to be using. I've got a uh, onion. Cut this up. Get this thing going. I'm going to do a little chop on it. So. Normally what I'll do with this is I'll just throw it into another bowl. I do have a big red bowl. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. small you want some nice bite sized pieces in there. Keep on letting that cook. Right up there. Alright, so now we're gonna need some garlic. 
Ten good people, though, so far. Daddy, Yo. can you put me on your shoe? One can you? It's not now, please. It's not now? Not right now, no. Because I'm doing a video of me cooking this stuff, so. After, when I'm done. Okay. We'll see. Will you put me on YouTube and then I can make my own video? No. No? Well, to do your own videos, you are. Is Mickey? Is on that? I don't know. Because Mickey might want to be on YouTube too. Yeah, well. Yeah, about six or seven cloves of garlic should be enough for this. You can add more or less, depending on what you like. Chop it up good. Sausage is just about ready to come out. going to help cook our uh, onions and all that. There we go. Now don't worry if you're thinking, oh, this is the best job done. It's not long enough. Well, it's going to cook more into the sauce, so it will be good. I'm going to shut this pan off. I'm going to on right now. bits down there. Look at that. That's going to be a lot of flavor for your chili. So we're going to add a little bit more olive oil to this. A couple tablespoons maybe. There we go. And then we're going to throw our onions in here. burn. I just want these to get sweated out. About eight, maybe ten minutes for this. Just let them sit down there. Do their thing. Oh, and you know what? Before I forget. Let's do some celery. It's going to add a whole another level of flavor to your chili. And if you're not a fan of celery, because I know a lot of people aren't, you don't need to put it in. But I like to. Mostly for the flavor. And it cooks down so much, basically, you don't even realize it's there. Yeah. Can I have some celery to eat from the fridge? 
Sure. Go ahead. You eat as much celery as you want, sweetheart. That's my daughter over there talking. She wants some celery to eat. So. There we go. Put our celery in there, too. I'm going to soften all this stuff up. Love the smell of that garlic, man. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Let's clean some of this stuff up. It's on the bottom. That's good stuff right there. Alright. So I'll bring it back when uh, this is pretty much done. And we'll go from there. Alright, so these onions, garlic, and celery have been going for about 8-9 minutes so far. So now I'm going to stick in my uh, my seasoning mix. Sprinkle that in. All right, and we're going to stir that around nice. Because with all that herbs and the seasoning that's in here. It's nice to get it all mixed in with the uh, onions and everything. Let it cook for like a minute because it, it'll release a lot of the uh, flavor and oils from the seasonings. See, it's starting to smell like chili, which is nice. Oh yeah, it smells good. Okay. Just want to get that going. Alright, and now I put the beer in. I put about a cup of beer in there. Uh, you can do less or more, whatever you like. You know, make it make it your own basically. And that will also help deglaze the pan. Get all that flavor out of there. Oh, yeah, it smells good. Okay. We'll let that sit for a couple minutes, <clears throat> do its thing. All right. And then we're gonna throw in some Worcestershire sauce. Not a lot, about a tablespoon. So. Mix that up. All right, so now the next thing we're gonna do is now that we have all that going. We're going to throw our meat back in. So we're going to throw our sausage meat in there. Yeah. And we're even going to throw our beef in there. Just let it go in there. We're going to give it a stir, combine it all out, get all that flavor all over the meat. There we go. Let it do its thing now. We're going to need. I use, uh, like I said, San Marzano tomatoes. Oh, look at that, I got it all over my shirt. It's all right. All right, so we got our tomatoes, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna crush these up with our hands. Yeah, you're gonna get a little dirty, but you know what? It's worth it. There's also basil in this. I usually try to take it out because I don't need the basil in there, but eh. If I can find some. There we go. Alright. Let's get this tomato in here. Throw our 
already chopped them up. Sorry to show you that, but red and uh, yellow pepper. Just throw that in there. Give this all a nice mix. Get it all going. There we go. And what else do we got? Right, so I know I said that we got beans and stuff, but they're going to go in there later. Um, tomato paste. We got to put some tomato paste in there. Simmering this for <clears throat> a few hours to get that meat nice and tender. So, all right, then we'll put some tomato paste. a little bit high because we want this to start boiling. So in the meantime, we got our pickled jalapeno peppers. Now, it's going to add a little extra heat. Again, if you don't like a lot of heat, you, you don't have to put the jalapenos in there. Um, uh, in my mix, my seasoning mix, I do use cayenne, about a teaspoon, uh, just to give it a little heat. I like spicy. So does my kids, usually. Right, Brooke? Yeah, you can, you can say yeah, you can talk. So, get a couple of these boys out. Don't like you touching these with my hands because you know what happens. You touch peppers and cut them. It's not my experience, especially when you rub your eye. So we're going to uh, cut these in half, actually. Yeah, that's all that good stuff there. And I'm going to do the uh, seeds and everything. Just not the uh, ends. I usually put two. Sometimes I'm, if I'm feeling like it, I'll put another one in there. But two is usually pretty good. I'm not gonna make it too spicy today because you know I got the kids that are well. Probably not. Like I said I'm probably not even gonna eat this today. I'm probably gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator overnight. And it's, a lot of the times it'll taste a lot better the next day because all those flavors get to melt together. And one other thing that I like to do, I don't know what I do with my spoon, is I like to take a little bit of this pickle juice, my jalapeno, throw that in there too, a couple, a couple splashes. And we're gonna mix this up. get this thing to a boil, we're ready to go. Oh, and the beans, I don't put the beans in until about an hour before it's done, because we don't want them to get too soft. And I do use black beans, I like black beans, they're a little smaller, a lot of people use the kidney beans, but I like the little black beans, myself. And again, you know, personal preference, if you like red kidney beans, put them in there. You want white, put them in there. You don't want beans at all? You don't have to, it's great. And what else do we get? There is one more thing that I put in this chili towards the end. Um, I, what I do is I brew a cup of really strong coffee, usually, and I'll put about six ounces of strong coffee in this. And what it does, it actually gives it a little bit of something. I don't know what it does, but it even cuts down the heat a little bit. But it's just something I've done, and it uh, seems to work out. And everybody that eats my chili says they love it, so I must be doing something right. So we're going to wait for this to come to a boil, and then we'll uh, throw it on uh, simmer, you know, low, 
and we're going to simmer this for like three to four hours, depending on when I think the meat is good to go. All right, so we will, uh, oh, and here we go, it's starting to boil now, I think. One thing I love about this stove is that this front burner, it boils fast. Let's get this stuff going. Oh, and you don't have to use the San Marzano tomatoes, because they are a little bit more expensive, especially this one was like almost $4 a can. You can use diced tomato, or you can even use fresh tomato if you have it. Dice it up, throw it in there. I've done that before. It works out well, too. But uh, that's pretty much it for now. So, like I said, we're going to bring this to a boil, throw it down to low for a simmer, and then three or four hours. So I'll see you guys when this is... I'm going to come back when I have to throw the beans and the coffee in, so you can take a look at it. And then uh, we'll go from there. All right, see you in a little bit. Oh, it's starting to come to a boil. So we're going to get this going. So now what we're going to do... I'm going to put that there. Don't need that. So we're going to lower this all the way down to low. All you want it to do is simmer for a few hours because you want to break down all the, uh, the fat and the collagen and the meat and everything like that. Plus, you know, you want this to taste really good. So I just put it on low and we're going to simmer on to cover it. And we're going to let that simmer three, maybe four hours. We'll see how it looks. I'll check it after uh, I'll, I'll check it after two hours just to see how things are going. And then uh, that should be it. So guys, I'm uh, very tempted here because uh, I got the rest of this beer. And it's only 11.15. I know it's too early. It's not 12 o'clock yet. Although it's 12 o'clock somewhere, right? I'll wait a little bit. Usually on Sundays I'll do a 16 and 8. Because we'll have lunch with the kids and all. Say hi, Brooke. Huh? You don't know how to say hi? Hi. What are you eating? An apple. Is it good? What? Is it good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to go to your friend's house today? Yeah. What time? Uh, 12 o'clock. Say bye. bye. Oh, so before I forget to tell you guys with the chili, just give it a check every once in a while just to stir it. You don't want the bottom to burn. That's not good eats. So let's just uh, here let's, uh, try to take a look without getting this all steamed up. So it's, it's rolling pretty good. So I'm going to give it a stir. I'm sorry about the glare there, but I have a crack in my phone, which sucks. Um, yeah, I'll give it a stir. And like I said, every once in a while, just give it a look, stir it up a little bit, and you'll be fine. Alright guys, so <clears throat> we're just about at two hours that this has been simmering. So we're going to open it up, check it out. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it smells good. Alright, so I'm just going to give it a stir. And what we're going to do, I'm just going to check this meat. Just to see how we are on the meat. And it's not pulling apart yet, so it's not, just not ready. Which is fine, we'll let it go a little longer. Right there. And what I also like to do at this point is I like to taste to see if there's enough spice, if there's any, you know, make sure the flavor is good. So I'll just get a little bit here. Let that cool off for a second. Ooh, that's nice. Wow. Yeah, good flavor. Decent amount of heat, not too much. Might even actually add another jalapeno in there, maybe. Eh, maybe not. It's actually pretty good. It's got a nice, it's got a nice little kick to it. Not, not too hot. But yeah, it's really good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leave the cover off. We're gonna let it simmer for about another hour, and we'll check the meat again. Um, what I want to do at this point is, it's kind of, as you can see, it still has some, a little bit of, a little watery, which is fine. So I'm going to let it simmer for like another hour, maybe reduce the, um, the liquid a little bit, just a little bit, not too much. Because when I add the beans to it, the beans will suck up a lot of that, that moisture. So, and then it'll be nice and thick after the beans are in there for about an hour. And, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So, she's looking good smells amazing tastes really good too so we'll come back in about an hour 
and we'll add the beans and uh, hopefully the meat's done and then we'll add the beans and uh, and the coffee can't forget the coffee yes strong coffee I don't know I, I saw it somewhere and I was like you know what I'm gonna give that a shot and I did and it, I, I just keep on adding it to my chili ever since so yeah we'll come back and check it out all right guys we're back um, so the chili's been simmering uncovered for about another hour all right and I'm gonna check this meat out just to see how we're doing here. Let's see, I gotta, I'm trying to get a big piece to see. That's a little guy. It looks like actually the meat's starting to fall apart, so that's really good. So here's our meat, and it's starting to break apart somewhat easily. It still has some time to go. But, at this point, we're gonna add the beans and the coffee, which I have not brewed yet. So I'm going to brew that right now. I got some strong K-cup uh, coffee, so we're going to just get the Keurig going and brew some coffee really quick and throw that in there. So let me do that. But in the meantime, well, that's going to take care of that. So I got my beans here in my big, big bowl. So I got my beans here. I uh, drained them from the can. Uh, I rinsed them, and they've been sitting pretty much in here for about an hour or so. So they're, they're pretty much good to go nice and clean and uh, we're just gonna dump these guys in this is two cans by the way of uh, black beans the smaller cans so let's just dump them in there there we go in there to wash that let's give this a stir get those beans worked in nice also if you notice after that hour of uncovered if it seems like maybe it's a little too thick you can add some beef broth. I added some beef consomme. Um, nice beef flavor, so it doesn't. It's not going to hurt it. Going to get a little more beef flavor in there. Just give it a stir, because this is probably going to go for about another hour, roughly. I'll check it every once in a while just to make sure uh, the meat's good. But we're going to let this get in there and do its thing. Like I said, those beans are going to gonna soak up a lot of that uh, that liquid, and they're going to get some nice flavor in them too. Beautiful. So here we go. Oh, it smells good. So we got our black, black strong coffee. Ah. Pour that in there. There we go. Stir it around a bit. There we go. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cover this again because we kind of have it where we want it. And uh, we're just going to let it simmer again for about another hour, maybe less. We'll see. I'll check on it every, like, 20 minutes or so just to make sure. And then uh, once it's done, we should be good to go. And then we're just going to let it sit out and cool down naturally because you don't want to put very hot tomato-based foods in the refrigerator from very hot because it'll sour, and that's not good to eat, so you don't want that. So we're going to let it, once it's done, let it sit and cool down naturally. Then we'll put it into uh, containers and throw them in the refrigerator to cool off, and uh, that'll be it. And then uh, it's only, what, like a quarter after two right now, so it's a little early to start smoking those wings, but we'll get to those a little bit later. All right, guys. Remember, cover it, let it simmer for another hour. All right, guys, so we're almost at our four hour mark so we're gonna take this beef out I'm gonna shred it up throw it back in so let's take get this beef going nice piece of beef there oh yeah look at that nice if I can find it all there we go Pretty sure I had about 10 pieces of beef in here. Oh, look at that. They're just falling apart. That's wonderful. Look at that. Oh. There it is. That's a little piece. I can keep that in there. I think that's 
pretty much it. I think that's all the beef that was in there. Might be some smaller pieces, but it's all good. So there we go, we got our beef. Gonna get a couple of forks here. And we're just gonna get break it. Look at that. It just oh, it just comes apart. Look at that. That's beautiful. Oh, you know what? Chef privilege. Oh my god, that's so good. Very tender. Absolutely fantastic. So we're just gonna shred this up. Not too too much, but. You know, you want to get this in the chili. You want to get when you when you take a bite of the chili, you want to get that meat in there. It's like perfect. Yeah. And that's with with these types of um, with this type of meat, these short ribs. It's gonna take a while to get this nice and tender. So four hours is certainly. Uh, plenty of time to get them to where you want to be. And then what we're going to do, we're going to shred this up nice. We're going to throw it back in the pot with the rest, stir it up, and just let it go for another, I don't know, 15 minutes. So we're about 15 minutes till we're done. Truth be told, this is the first time I've actually used... Um, this type of meat in my uh, chili. Usually I'll just buy the chuck, the, the chuck roast. It's a lot cheaper. Um, like a two pound chuck roast probably cost you about five bucks, six bucks. This meat is probably around $14. But, so much better. Like I said, I'm not gonna go crazy with, with breaking it up. You know, you want some a little bit bigger chunks in there. This is nice. And like I said, that meat tastes absolutely amazing. And yeah, you'll still have some fat on there, but you know what? It won't hurt you. There we go. I think that's pretty good. Let's throw this in there, and it'll, it'll break down a little bit more as it's sitting. There we go. Now we're going to put this back in. There we go. Stir this up. Now you got that nice shredded beef in there. And like I said, another 15 minutes. We can turn it off and let it cool down. And we'll be good to go. Beautiful. Alright. Hi right, everybody. Since I'm sitting here waiting for the uh, the wings to uh, smoke, I figured I'd uh, just sit down and chat. So, nice day today here. I mean, a little cloudy, but I can't complain. It's not raining, so that's a plus. So I just wanted to say I wanted to thank everybody who's commented on my videos or, you know, a lot of kind words out there. I appreciate that very much. You know, I, I've gotten comments from quite a few people, and you know who you are. You know, like DB, thank you very much. Emily from Alaska, X, thank you. Actually, Emily, you're the only one that commented on my last video about that uh, quote that I put up there. You know, and you got it right. It was the right movie, and and he and the person that said it did say it. So props to you. <laughs> I'm a big Back to the Future fan, so. You know, I'll quote that movie a lot, so <laughs> it's all good. But uh, no, seriously though, thank you everybody. You know, uh, uh, Caroline, thank you. You know, you guys have nothing but kind things to say, and you keep me motivated, and I appreciate that. You know, I'm sorry, I'm just watching the smoker here. 
but uh yeah it's it's been it's been an interesting ride so far it's you know me for me it's you know you know this is my third video but even before the videos it's been an interesting ride and I appreciate everybody's support I really do and thank you very much you know you, you can't get through without support you know and I get support from my family as well my wife especially she's very supportive you know and uh, she's not here right now she's got to go to work this week she's gonna be away for the week I'm gonna miss her miss you sweetie it sucks but you know hey such is life right and I got my kids you know they're out right now at their friends hanging out having fun and I'm here cooking with you guys which is great you know I love cooking so and I hope you guys like this you know hey and if and if you really like it and if you want me to do more videos like this please just put a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to do videos of me cooking I have no problem with that you know I love cooking it's a passion for me you know I used to do it for a living you know and uh, you know it's fun you know so it's funny because the chili I'm making I just texted a few co-workers said hey I made some chili this time I put some um, short rib meat in there and now they're like oh looks like we're having lunch <laughs> so I gotta bring a bunch for work tomorrow which is fine I won't be eating it but they will but I'll get a lot of joy out of the, you know, them enjoying my food, so that's fine. And that's that's one of the great things about cooking. It's not just that you get to enjoy it, but you get to watch other people enjoy what you just created. And that's that's awesome. But yeah, man, it's uh it's great. So again, thank you guys very much. Much appreciation for all of you. Thank you. And uh, you know, we'll get through all this together. And oh, on another note. I got a phone call from my brother earlier. Just gonna have a drink. So, my brother saw a couple of my first two videos, and now he's interested in doing intermittent fasting. So I was on the phone with him for about 15, 20 minutes, going over everything. I said, "Look, if you really want to do this, you can do it. There's a there's a ton of support out there." And I even mentioned to him some of the other channels that I watch with this. I said, "Give it a look. If you want to do it, you do it." I'll support you, and so will everybody else. Like you guys, you will. I know you will. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, he'll get on the bandwagon, the intermittent fasting bandwagon, you know, and then uh, we'll go from there. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on my uh, smoker here, make sure the temperature's not going too high, and that's it. So again, thank you very much, and I'm. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you. All right, guys. So this chili's been sitting here for a couple hours now. Let's take a look at this. Ooh, look at that. Nice. It's starting. It's thickened up a lot since it's been sitting out here. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. It smells good. And I just tasted it. It tastes very good. So yeah, this is pretty much it. And um, it's it's cool enough to maybe start to put into another container, maybe throw it in the fridge. What I'll do is I'll just throw it into a container and let it sit on the counter for a little bit before I put it in the fridge. And then uh, that's it. But there you go. John's award-winning chili. And I'm not even joking. I actually, uh, we had a contest at work once and uh, 10 people brought in chili. But I brought in two types. I brought in a Texas chili without beans and, and my regular chili with ground beef. And uh, I actually took first and second place. So now my chili, I don't use ground beef anymore really in my chili. Now I just use regular beef like you saw. And uh, yeah, man, it's it's good stuff. So yes, it is award-winning chili, but it's good stuff. And if you guys make this at home, I really hope you enjoy it. It's good stuff. All right, so now steaks. So we're just gonna season these up. I got some um, SPG, salt, pepper, garlic. Easy little thing here. So we're just gonna season these boy boys up. Okay, we'll pat them down. And flip them, season the other side. Got some nice New York strip steaks. Figure what the heck. There we go. 
All right, not a lot, just a little bit, a little flavor. There we go. And that's that. So now I'm gonna get my regular grill ready, and then when it's hot enough, we'll throw these bad boys on and cook them up. Beautiful day, yep. But anyway, there we go. We got our steaks, and we got our grill. Uh, about 550 degrees, that's pretty good. It's gonna be nice and hot. So I got my three zones going. My, uh, it's gonna be hot, hot, hot. There we go, get those grill grates hot. So we're gonna throw these steaks on here. They're probably only gonna cook about two minutes per side because they're not that thick, so let's get these bed boys on there. One. And two. So we'll let those go for about, as eh, I'll do about two minutes per side, maybe. Maybe a little more, two and a half. But I will turn them slightly just to get some nice grill marks on them. You'll see. Let's see. Eh, almost there. The other grill marks. I always flip them over because, like, like I said, they're kind of thin, so I don't want to overcook them. I like my steaks like medium, medium rare around there. So, let's just flip them now. There we go. Almost had the grill marks going over there. That's alright. They were thicker, be much better. But this is fun. There you go, look at that. Get them cooking. Like I said, if you can get your grill up to like 550, 600, good. Just leave it there. more minutes on this side and then we should be good. guys so here's my steak let's cut this bad boy down the middle see what we got there we go nice I don't know if you can see the, the color in there but it's it's perfect so that's it you got my steak I'm gonna cut this up for me and my helper all right guys I hope you enjoyed this video today I made a lot of food today so me and the uh, little helper are about to sit down and eat dinner so enjoy have a good night and thanks for watching bye